You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. And if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain.
good morning. Welcome to Hedgeway Church Online this morning. Thank you for choosing to be with us today, whether you're watching on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or today here live on Facebook Live or YouTube. We thank you so much for taking time to be with us this morning. Special, special time. Hope you enjoyed Easter. Man, it was it was something special for us here. I know just uh, seeing so many people drive through in the parking lot. We apologize to those of you who didn't know. We didn't know that was going to happen, so it was, uh, it was not something we could have made an announcement about. So we do appreciate those of you who were able to do that. Uh, my wife was like, why couldn't I come? And I was like, you want to sit in the parking lot for an hour and a half with two kids? Uh, it's a hard pass for, for everybody. So uh, we appreciate everybody who was able to make it out, man. It was meant a lot to us, and I hope that you guys enjoyed your Easter as well. Man, it was, it was a special service. We felt the presence of the Lord in this place, and I know you did where you're watching. Hopefully the same sort of atmosphere today. want to encourage you, please share this stream. If I say the word share, and I'm just going to give you a little nerdism, nerdism here from Facebook. If I say the word share in a post, Facebook will share it to less people. So I'm telling you here live share this post because if you'll do that it'll show to more people facebook will show it to more people and i, I kind of made a reference to it in the post before service this is our act of one click evangelism we can share with all of our friends this service have more people watch it more people come to know jesus through one click of a button so please share this with your friends let them know that you're watching hedgeway church and love for them to be with us as well it's a time of worship it's a time for us to get together and and just enjoy each other's company in digital form i know we've had five or 600 comments every week for the last month and some change. So I, I think you guys are enjoying being able to speak and communicate with one another during service. If you're new and you'd like to know a little bit more about the church, you can obviously go through this Facebook page whenever you get the opportunity. You can go to hedgewaychurch.com. You can send the word welcome to 479-777-2858. Just send a text message to that phone number, the word welcome, and we'll connect with you. Uh, also, if you'd like to know about the things that are going on, you can off there's lots of new content. Seth and, and the team have been doing really, really good stuff, putting out lots of content all week on our Facebook page. But if you'd like to know about the things that we'll be doing going forward, there's a, another group that you can text. Same number, 479-777-2858. You can text the word loop to that. And if at some point today during service you give your heart to Jesus, and you can do it right now. You don't have to wait until some crummy, and I can say crummy preacher because it's me today, uh, gets up here and starts telling you about you know all the things that you're doing wrong in your life. You can give your heart to Jesus right now, and you can send the word salvation to 479-777-2858. We'll connect with you. We'll walk through you, uh, through with, with you through this, uh, this transition and through this time. You know, I just had somebody text me on Friday night having a tough time and just needed somebody to talk to. And we'd love to be there for you if you've got things going on and you need somebody to lean on. I know this is a, this is a different time. It's a difficult time. Today I want to look at uh, how we can make the most of it, how we can, we can grow from and through it. But we appreciate you all joining us and being with us. We also appreciate your consistent and faithful giving. It allows us to do so much here locally and around the world. Did you see the Facebook post that, of the cookies yesterday? That going to the, the first responders and people who are helping, people who are on the front lines of this COVID fighting. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Dr. Noonan is the only person in the entire Johnson County area who's testing people for corona. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not positive about that, but he is at least one of the only people in this area who are testing people for coronavirus. If that's not the front lines, I don't know what is. And so there are people who are putting their lives at, at risk every day in the hospitals and you know nurses and all these people who are doing lots of essential things. And we wanted to say thank you. So, so Seth and, and the team brought some cookies to them from a local business. It's just uh, things like that, little small things that we can do here locally, also helping with the backpack programs. We help during school to send supplies back with students who may otherwise not have school supplies. So there's just lots of stuff here that, that Hedgeway's able to do and then around the state with the Murphys in the prison, or in the prisons, they're not, they might as well be there sometimes because of the stuff they got going on in the Hemlock Courts, the, uh, the oldest project in all of Arkansas and North Little Rock. And we're able to help support and keep them on the ground there at Ground Zero where lots of stuff goes on that's not so good and then life change happens when the 
these students and, and parents and families get around the Murphys. And we so thank you for helping to support them. We've got the uh, Kasurics who've been in the prisons, and obviously this has kind of changed things for them for the time being. But they're, they're working hard, and they've been there for a long time to help people come to know Jesus in one of the toughest situations of their lives. Uh, we've also got the Lapushis. I don't know if you saw the video, but Seth got to, to Zoom or, or chat with him, and, and that was really cool to see a video from Albania where, where Seth got to talk to the Lapushis. Uh, we want to say our prayers and thanks for, uh, for the Andersons who are back in Russellville now and back in the area from Albania. But we, we've tried to help support them for so long there in Albania. And for those of you who are watching for the first time, Don's made mention of this before, less than one-tenth of one percent had ever heard about Jesus when these missionaries go to Albania. That's what you're giving to help support the, the mission of Jesus across the world. You've got the Molars in Scotland, Joe and Jesse in Thailand, all these different missionaries that make a difference all around the world because of you guys' faithful and consistent giving. You can go to hedgewaychurch.com. You can click the Give Online option. If you're out and about during the week, you can drop a check by the, the church. We'd love to, to be able to you know take it and, and distribute it as it is uh, needed here. And we're trying our best to be the best stewards we possibly can of everything that comes in. It, it's one of those things, and I'm going to mention this later, but it wouldn't be possible years and years ago to do what we're doing right now. And it's because of you guys' consistency in giving that we're not having to, to worry about closing the doors for good like some people are going to have to do. So we just thank you so much for everything you've done. Now let's pray and bless this offering, and let's bless the rest of our time together this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship together online. Lord, I know that even though there's a camera and there's not people in, in place here, uh, Lord, you can still speak to hearts and lives through the Word, through worship, through everything we do in this moment today. I pray that if anybody needs you, and we don't know the situations, but you do. You understand all that's going on in our lives. And I pray that if anybody needs you, they would turn to you right now, not to wait another moment. They feel your presence. They feel your tug on their heart. Help them to turn their lives to you and say, I need a Savior. I need your help. I lay my life. I believe Jesus died for my sins, rose again. We celebrate that. Lord, I thank you for the, the offering. Thank you for what you're going to do through this church and its people. Thank you for all the good things that are going to happen here locally, in the state, and around the world. We are so honored to work in this with you. Thank you so much for choosing us as Hedgeway Church. Thank you so much for the people who are watching right now. I pray that you would be with them, that you would bless them, help them, lift them up. Whatever situations they're going through, whatever struggles they've got, help them. Thank you for everything you've done and everything you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning. And again, we're going to ask you not to pray for yourself. I know you have needs and situations. I know you're in the middle of a huge challenge. I know there's things going on. And uh, I, I know you just want to say, God, help me. But we're going to pray that God helps you while you pray that God helps someone else. So if you've got stuff going on and you've got a need this morning, stick your hand up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we come before you so thankful, Lord, for your peace that passes all understanding, for your peace, Lord, that, that you maintain in the middle of everything you endured for our sakes. Thank you for your peace, Lord, that floods our souls here this morning. I pray your peace for each and every one that's watching today, for each and every one that's worshiping with us today. Your peace, Lord, minister to them, encourage them, lift them up. I pray, Lord, that you would minister in every area of our lives because all those other areas continue. There are people, Lord, that need to be ministered to physically. They, they need to be touched emotionally. Father, they need help financially. We turn to you, Lord, as our provision and our source. And we're praising you. We're not begging you today because we're not made beggars in recreation, but your sons and your daughters. And so we turn to you thanking you and praising you as you minister into every need and every life, Lord. Right now, touch them, I pray. Touch them, I pray. Minister to them. Minister to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. Now you guys stay with me a minute, praise and worship team. Hang with me for just a minute. I ask uh, our student pastor, Mark, to, uh, well, it's not just Mark, it's Mark, and it's Candace, and it's Hayden, and it's Olivia. They're our student pastors. And uh, we miss you, Candace and kiddos. Pray you're doing well. I ask Mark to minister today. This is a very unique opportunity. And I, I, I asked him, I said, Ben, could you minister Sunday morning? You don't want to let this pass you by without experiencing the the unique enablement of the Holy Spirit in this situation. I, I would use the, the term anointing and unction. It's These are all very churchy words that we throw around expecting everyone to understand it. But not everyone understands it. If you're watching today and you don't know the Lord as your Savior and you need His empowerment in your life, you, you need the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, call out to Jesus right now. And ask Him to, to save you, to fill you up, to baptize you, to overflow it in the power and the person of the Holy Spirit right where you're at. I'm telling you, when they begin worship on a Sunday morning, His presence settles into this basically vacant building uh, in a real and tangible way, in a way that you can sense it. And I pray that you sense it at home also. So I'm going to ask the worship team to sing just a little bit more of that song. And then we're going to turn uh, Pastor Mark loose with the word this morning. Thanks again for being with us.
Well, if y'all are worshiping as well as we are here, you probably don't need me to come in and preach. I think you're all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Servant's heart right there. You see that? Your pastor carrying the water. Man, man, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. They were, they were bringing it this morning. <clears throat> well, man. It's almost like you don't want to. You don't want to keep going. You don't want to. Okay, I'm going to though. I'm going to. I hope you guys have been enjoying um, the content at HedgewayChurch.com and on our Facebook page and all the good stuff that that Seth and the team have been putting out. Man, I I've been very impressed, even with the egg stuff. Uh, that was excellent, wasn't it? That was just uh, wow. I cannot believe that. No, I can't. I I know Jordan and Seth well enough to know that 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 is definitely in their wheelhouse. That is definitely something that they would do. I hope you have enjoyed watching those things and, and seeing the good stuff that's coming out of this. I, I think it's one thing that is, is positive that's coming out of this is that we're getting to be, and we're by necessity having to be way more creative. We're having to think of ways to get things to you, content to you, help in some way when we can't hug your neck and uh, you know shake your hand and if that drive through doesn't keep popping in my head every single day about the, how, how cool that, that felt and how emotional that was for me uh, to see you guys last week and knowing you know, kind of where I'm going here today and how, how I felt about um, what you guys did for us last week, that, uh, it's, it's an emotional time right now. And uh, I wanted to look, because last week obviously being Easter, week before that, Palm Sunday, we've had the process of the end of Jesus' life on our minds for at least two weeks now as you look at him coming into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday all the way through Passion Week, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We celebrated last week on Easter. So I wanted to look from a, a standpoint and a title, what now? What do we do now in response to Jesus' resurrection? I didn't know this until just a little bit ago. I asked Don right before we started, I said, what are we, what are we talking about in the next series? And he said, where do we go from here? <laughs> I said, wow, that's amazing that we're, we're kind of hitting, and I hope we, hopefully uh, dovetailing with one another the things that the Lord wants us to say. I, I've struggled probably more with this message as far as, is this the right thing? Is this the right thing to say? Is this Because it feels more like, a to me, the notes, more like a motivational speech, a rah-rah. You'll see here in just a minute why. Uh, than anything I've ever had before. I've, I've come up here a few times and been like, this is about to be awesome. This is about to be. This is about to go well. It has, hasn't always gone well, but I have felt like a lot of times this is going to go awesome. And today, I just I didn't really know. And then I, I talked to Don, and I, you know, I hear the songs that they play this morning. And I'm I'm a song person. I don't know if you are, uh, but if if you hear a good song, you know it may confirm something in your spirit. It may it may lift you up in a moment. Um, and then I saw a post from from Kathy Gilliam on Facebook on Facebook Live. She said the Holy Spirit's in this room. And I said, man, that's, uh, that's awesome, because that's what we've been talking about, what we've been feeling, and, and it confirms to me that what we're doing this morning is, is going to help somebody, and it's going to be something that, that the Lord can use to help somebody in this time. Uh, this is a unique time, and it's, it's a time like we've never experienced before. We may never experience anything like it again, but I want to look post-Jesus' resurrection, just right after... Um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. What, what happened? If you look at Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John chapters 20 and 21, it tells of the post-resurrection actions of the disciples and how they responded to the return and ascension of Jesus. If you look at the book of Acts, especially in chapter 1, it goes into much more detail leading into the day of Pentecost, which was 50 days later on uh, in Acts chapter 2. So what now, what do we do with the resurrection of Jesus? The first thing that I think we ought to do is, you know, in, in response to his resurrection, is to go where he asks us to go. If you look at the ascension of Jesus, it happened right after he saw up to 500 people in person, right? He, he saw 500 people and he said, go to Jerusalem. You're going to be given power. 120 of the 500 go. I, that's such a crazy... I feel... I want to say that I would be one of the ones who would be like, yeah, I'm, I saw Jesus. He told me to do it. I did it. But it was like a three-to-one ratio of people who didn't. 
And they, they, had, they saw him face to face. He said, hey, go hang out in Jerusalem. That's not hard, is it? And they didn't do it. They just disobeyed. So the first thing I think we ought to do and think about right now where we are is to go where he asks us to go and be where our feet are. I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. And, and there, there you go. That's two out of the three points that I've got this morning. Go where you're supposed to go and be where your feet are. So we're going to get to go get a taco or the ingredients to make your own at home uh, here pretty soon. <laughs> I was talking with Seth this last week, and I was like, man, I cannot wait for the first service we get to, to have together, and then we should just go blow up a Mexican restaurant with every one of us at the same time. <laughs> like They'd be like, what happened? Hedgeway happened. 400 people showed up at one time to have a taco. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they would appreciate that. Let's, uh, let's, let's work on that. We'll figure something. We're going we're gonna to dream on that one and figure out what we're going to do. Romans 12.1. That's the verse. That's, I've got one verse for the wall this morning, for the, uh, for the screens. I'm going to quote some other scriptures because, as I've always said, uh, they're smarter than I am, uh, the folks who wrote the Bible. But I do have one verse for the screen because I know it's a pain to kind of move that camera back and forth that I think we ought to really dig into today. And a word that I've never seen this way came out when I was researching this verse this morning. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. If you look in other renderings of that scripture, it says to present your bodies to God, a living yeah. sacrifice. And yeah. one rendering says that it's our uh, spiritual worship, Another one says it's our reasonable act of service to present our bodies, just to present our bodies to God. Reasonable act of service, true and proper worship, the least that we can do. Yeah. The very least we can do is come to God and say, hey, I don't know what I have, you do, but you can have me. You can have my life. I'm going to do what you ask me to do. I'm going to go where you ask me to go. I'm going to be where my feet are, and I'm going to make a difference wherever I am and whatever I find myself doing. The least that we can do is go to Jerusalem. When he tells us to just go and receive, I got something for you. I've got this power that I want you to receive, but only 120 out of the 500 go. He's asking us to present our bodies, prioritizing obedience to him and our personal assignments. But that word present is the one that really it opened my eyes this week because present, 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 there's a lot of different ways you can go with that word. The word present and present in that rendering means to place beside. Get as close to God as you possibly can. His presence may need, needs to be a priority in our lives. We need to go place ourselves beside of another word, another way, uh, definition of that word is close beside. We need a proximity to the presence of God. And also, this is where things shifted for me this week as I started looking at this. Am present. Present yourself, the same word, am present, to be present. I, I, guys, I've, I've had a, a weird time lately, uh, being home and not being you know, at the office all the time, and it's changed my, my perspective, and I, I want to get into that here in just a minute, but present our bodies present in the moment, present, because he knew, God knew exactly what would be going on and what would be happening, and he chose to send you in this time, in this moment, for such a time as this, there are problems that could not be solved without you on the planet. There are people that could not be reached without you on the planet. Last Tuesday, guys, was one of the best days of my whole life. Uh, we were at the house. Obviously, I was working from home. But I woke up and we played a little bit, me and Hayden and Olivia, just you know, rolling around on the floor playing. I worked for a little bit. Uh, I watched Hayden do his schoolwork on the back porch. Um, you know, I set out some meat for dinner. Hayden has to do his work on the back porch every once in a while because Olivia won't leave him alone. She just wants to be playing and, and you know, shoving him down and then crying when he touches her. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> so he, she's doing all this, he's doing all that. And I, I'm playing with, with Olivia. And I, you may have seen the picture on Facebook. She had one of his hats on backwards and just looked so stinking cute. Man, I'm in trouble with that one. She's, uh, man, she's something. I put a terrible little rubber band uh, hair thingy in her hair. I hope Seth may have figured it out and how to do it, but... I'm just not there yet. I, I, can't, I can't figure out the hair yeah. vacuum cleaner. There you go. I just get it all off there? Just cut it? Or just like to hold? I, I don't know. I, I put a terrible one in her hair, and it was, you know, hair going every different direction. But uh, we, you know, <laughs> we played quite a bit. Yeah, those pigtails, though. I don't know if you've seen. Candace put the pigtails in her hair the other day, and it's just, 
it wrecks me. I, I can't, what can I do? She's so sneaking cute, and, you know, she's starting to snuggle up to Daddy and give me those little pouty eyes, and, I mean, she can get whatever she wants in that moment, you know, up to half my kingdom. You can have anything you want. Uh, we went out that, that Tuesday we, to show my mom the, some land that we bought that we're going to potentially build a house on, and, you know, Hayden and Olivia out there playing, and Hayden's seeing the deer tracks, and he's building little rock castles with Olivia, and they're just having the time of their life out there on the land. We, we came home, and I grilled some chicken. We took a walk. Candace has been making me walk. I'm now a walker. Uh, we played around the yard for about an hour, hour and a half outside. That's been pretty neat when it's the weather's allowed us to. The kids drove the little Jeep. I know Hayden and Paisley used to love driving around in their little Jeeps together. Uh, they drove around in the yard while Candace used the new electric hedge trimmers I got her. And those that like that's a revelation. She loves me way more than she ever did because I got her electric hedge wow. trimmers. I know it's amazing. That's all it took. Fifty dollars at Lowe's. You can uh, you can make your wife love you for a little while. Uh, we watched, that was the night that the big full moon came up. Did y'all see that? Yeah. It was, uh, it was pretty, it was nice, and, and we kind of watched that rise, and we came in, and <laughs> our kids have been rednecks, right? They've been running around, no shoes on, no socks on, so we, we washed their feet off, and uh, as they were kind of running, running their batteries down and, and kind of winding down, we laughed so hard as we, we FaceTimed their friends, Knox and Nora, who, you know, they're Hayden's best friend, and Olivia loves Nora, and we watched him do the little floss dance. Have y'all seen that? Oh, my Lord, it's awful. I should get Seth up here to, uh, to show us how to do the floss dance. That's a, uh-oh, am I too far down, too far up? On my shirt? It is on my shirt. Uh-oh. Let me do this. Is that better? I hope it's better. Anyway, we watched them do the floss dance on, uh, on FaceTime with Knox and Nora, and I'll be honest with you, I was pretty emotional when I sat down to write down some of these notes and to, to kind of document some of these things. I've been posting a lot of stuff on Facebook and trying my best to, uh, to document some of this stuff because we're never going to have these moments again, you know, we're never going to have this opportunity, and I, I mentioned it, it's the, one of the best days of my whole life, I won't even get into the fact that 20 minutes after I wrote all this stuff down, Hayden <laughs> brought me a handwritten note that said, you are so mean, and I was yeah. like, what, <laughs> why, because we were sitting in the bed trying to get them to go to sleep, and we're playing the Lion King, Lydia comes up to me, and she goes, Lion King, Dad, I watch Lion King every five minutes, and we were listening to, I just can't wait to be king, oh, I love that song, and Hayden thought it'd be funny to just start squealing and screaming. And I was trying to hear Olivia's voice. So I was like, stop it, quit. And he got mad at me. And he sent me a handwritten note said, you are so mean. Uh, it, was, it was really funny. I, I, I know you're listening and you're hearing me say that this is one of the best days of my life. And you're waiting for the extraordinary part, uh, the best day ever part. There's not one. It was just a great, great time. And I was able to, for at least one day, pause be where my feet were and, and just experience my family and love on my kids like I hadn't in a long time. Guys, we'll never, literally never have these moments again. Right. And without some stupid virus that stopped the entire world, I would have totally taken them for granted. I would have been at a meeting or doing something for work or trying to recover from a long day at the office instead of enjoying my wife and my kids. Um, that's something that I've had to, to deal with for a long time. Does anybody like Rascal Flatts? I love Rascal Flatts, or I used to at least. Uh, they had a song, and the, the lyrics of this song have been going through my head for a week. It's titled Mayberry. It's about the town, obviously, that Andy Griffith uh, made famous. It said, I miss Mayberry sitting on the porch drinking ice-cold cherry Coke, where everything was black and white. Ever heard that? <laughs> da-da, da-da. I won't go any further. Yeah. The, the part that really strikes me at this time, and this song was written 20 years ago, so this is a long time ago that this, this came out. It says, naturally we have more natural disasters from the strain of a fast pace. That's what this world is dealing with right now is a slowdown that came after we were just moving 90 to nothing in such a fast pace. Have y'all noticed any of the pictures, the videos, the graphics, the things that are coming out of places like Italy? or Yellowstone, or China even, like they've got graphics that show all the smog and all the pollution that's normally in places in, in China, that since things have calmed down and people have kind of been stuck in their homes not driving around, the pollution has gone away to such a large, it's so huge a difference. Uh, if you go to Italy, there are places that 
you, you see fish and you see you know, animal life returning that hasn't been in years because there's normally people pushing them out. You go to Yellowstone, there are animals that they haven't seen in years that are coming out of the woodwork because there's nobody there to bother them. There's nobody there to push them back. Um, we've pushed the boundaries so far on this earth and in our own lives that we've suffocated the planet in a lot of ways. And we're nearly strangling ourselves. And it took a pandemic for me to even realize it in my own life. I hadn't been presenting myself holy or acceptable or loving my wife like Christ loved the church and giving his life for her. Ephesians 5 said, until recently, my family was lucky to get the leftovers. Right. Hopefully you guys aren't in that situation, but you may be, and you may need to consider this. I like that old four hymn song. I told you I'm a song person, a lyric person. That old four hymn song said, we need to get back to the basics of life. And guys, I'm, I'm trying, and I hope you guys are too. If I can encourage anything at this moment in history, I want to ask you to seek out the moments and the opportunities to make memories and to take mental snapshots of your kids, your grandkids, your spouse, and appreciate what you've been blessed with. Because, like I said, this is never going to happen again. This is, this is a time unlike any other. Uh, I wonder if anybody, and I, I think there have been some, who have been saved or rededicated their lives during this quarantine time. I've got a little bit of analogy for, for you, and it, it'll work for, for anybody. Uh, do I have any fellow clothes sniffers that are watching right now? Anybody do that? It's mostly a guy thing. I, I'm readily aware. But like, you sniff the armpit to make sure it's worth, you know, you can wear it again. You, you lightly wore these sweatpants and this hoodie the day before, right? And you're like, I'll just, it's, it's not a problem. I've been in the house for three days straight. I can wear the same hoodie. It's, I, I wonder if there are any clothes sniffers. I, I was about, I'm going to rat on myself. I was about to wear the same hoodie the other day, and maybe t-shirt, I don't remember, maybe all of it, um, the other day, and I got ready to take a shower, <laughs> and have you ever noticed that if you, if you sniff the clothes and then you take a shower, when you get out of the shower, those clothes just, they don't smell good anymore, right? They just don't smell the same, like, I, you know, I'm clean, I'm going to go ahead and get those out of the way, and I'm going to find something new. Uh, I feel like in a lot of ways, when we get done with this quarantine, we're going to feel like, you know, the stuff, the sniff test, just, we just can't pass it anymore with the way our lives have been going. We're going to have to, to find something new, find a different way to go about this, because once we take a, a step back and assess, you may want to go a new direction. Philippians 2 calls it working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You, you look, at the Lord, look at the Word, ask the Lord to show you the direction He'd have you to go, and then go there go there. That's, it's a simple point, but that's, a, I think, a powerful one. The stuff you and I thought is all right. You know, I, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with it. It's, it kind of stinks, though, when you get truly clean. Did y'all see the video last week? It's, we put it on Facebook. Uh, uh, Miss Sarah, who uh, seven months sober, and she's yeah. fighting like crazy to, to stay sober and, and fight the good fight of faith. But uh, when she turned her life over to Jesus, to her, it was, a, it was a done deal. And she's fighting like crazy, like I said, to never go back, to, to keep moving forward, to prioritize faith and family and the friends that God's put before you. I told our kids in Crosswalk a couple weeks ago on our Devo that this is a perfect time when you're separated from all these people and every influence uh, to kind of cut, cut out some people that you know deep down don't belong in your life, people that are leading you the wrong direction or people that you, know, you don't even like that you hang out with or that you spent time with or that you let speak into your life. And this, in this moment when you don't have to be around some of these people, it's a perfect time to just kind of naturally distance yourself. And then when you go back to quote-unquote normal life, just go a different direction. I think that this is a good time for that. Uh, I was talking with Don this morning about you know, his message for next week, and the thought was about heaven. And I've been thinking a little bit about heaven because the, the phrase, it's not long now, keeps coming into my mind. And it, I remember my grandparents used to say that in reference to heaven. No, you've got family, you've got friends that are already over there. They're already on the other side, and it won't be long now till we see them again. You know, I've, I've been thinking about this quarantine and how much I miss so many of you and how it won't be long now till we get to see you guys again. We get to hug your necks and shake your hand. I, believe it or not, guys, it really does weigh heavy, and it really does affect us. I, I don't want to speak necessarily for the other pastoral staff, but I do believe that they are counting the moments so they can see you guys again, so they can hug your neck and, and shake your hand. And It's like when we come back in here, it's going to be our own little slice of heaven to be back together with you guys, and it's not long now. I'm not naive enough to believe that 
we won't go back to being busy anymore because, you know, we're going to have baseball practice, we're going to have softball practice or soccer practice or whatever is going on in your life and, and in my life. But I do hope that I can keep better perspective in my life going forward, that I can present my body, my life, a living sacrifice to God, that I can keep that perspective. So what, what do we do now? I believe we'd better operate like he's coming back soon and like this thing's all going to, to change and we're going to go back to quote-unquote normal life and, and hopefully do things a little bit differently. But operating like Je my papa man always told me, Jesus is coming back, coming back soon. He told me he's going to see him, and he has. <laughs> he, he thought he's going to be here when that moment came, when, when he split the skies. He thought he was going to be here. And, you know, he may not have been correct that he was going to see him on this side, but every day that, that the Lord tarries is one day closer to the day he is coming back. It's true. I mean, that's a scientific fact. We better take advantage of every day we've got and all these moments of a lifetime. You know, the moments of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. The opportunities of a lifetime must be seized within the opportunity's lifetime. Take good mental notes. Take lots of pictures and treasure this time you've got with your family. You know, the Bible says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Treasure this time that you've got with your loved ones while we've got it. Play that extra game of hide and seek, even if your kids are terrible at it like mine are. Uh, Hayden, <laughs> poor kid, he has no attention span, so like he'll go and hide, and if you don't find him in like 30 seconds, he's like, hey, I'm over here, and you have to go get him. <laughs> and then the, the worst part about Hayden with hide and seek is that whenever he, it's your turn to hide and he's going to count and come find you, he will, uh, he'll wait about 30 seconds, he'll look in every little you know, open space in the living room, and then he'll just go hide again himself. So, like, you're hiding, and so is he, and you have to figure out what to do. Uh, and Olivia is even worse, because she'll, she'll be playing with Hayden, and he'll be hiding under the bed, and she'll have these little fat legs sticking out, because she can't get underneath the bed with him, and, and she'll be like, ah! and she'll look at me, and I'll be like, hey, Daddy, and I'm just like, there you are, and I'll say, I'll say, where's Hayden, and she'll go right here. <laughs> She's a little tattletale, a little narc. Uh, Play that extra game of hide and seek. Take that walk with your wife, even if you're like me, and you're like, man, I would rather do nothing right now than take that walk. I would rather just, just take a sit and, and watch some tube. Uh, hug that kid. Yeah. Live your best life in this moment. Romans 12, 1 says to present your bodies. V verse 2 says also not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Guys, COVID broke the pattern for the yeah. time being. We've got an opportunity that we've never had before to do things a different way from now on. So three, the three points, and I'm, I'm going to hush, that I had today. Go where he says. Be one of the Jerusalem 120. Physically and spiritually obey. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Number two, be where your feet are. Be present where your feet are. And number three, keep perspective because you're pre-sent. Number, uh, number three is there, keep perspective. Pastor Jeremy Foster says, your ability to receive what God has for you is determined by your perspective. Amen. You can't receive from God what your perspective won't allow you. Uh, here's a, an example for perspective. Can you imagine what COVID would have done to churches 20 years ago? Oh, yeah, for sure. They're done. You, can't, you couldn't do what we're doing right now 20 years ago. There would have been a select tiny handful that could have recorded or could have done this or that and survived. But now you've got every church in the world, basically, who with a phone can live stream for free. Right. And we've got an opportunity to survive when 20 years ago this would have put the church under. Right. I, I really don't see how Hedgeway, aside from you know either breaking the rules of getting together anyway or you know in smaller groups or whatever... We would have had to been creative, and maybe, maybe God's grace would have allowed us to keep going, but it would have been a huge problem right. 20 years ago for us to be able to do what we're doing. So perspective, 20 years later, we're able to do what we're doing through Facebook Live and through a camera and reach out to more people than we po probably even were when we were having physical services. So it's all about your perspective. You are pre-sent. I wonder if this isn't our opportunity to lay down some real deep family roots. This is something I'm working on, something I want to do. You know, maybe a, as for me and my house, Joshua said, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to make this our priority in this time. This may be our once-in-a-lifetime 
chance to solidify the direction of ourselves and our families yeah. forever. And guys, this is not an accident or a surprise or a problem at all to God. It's a divine appointment. I believe that. We're here for such a time as this to make a difference in our communities because we've been sent right here, right now. You guys can come on back up if you will. I believe this is a, a divine appointment for us as a church and us as families, us as individuals to really focus, refocus. Um, I'll close with this, this thought. There was a uh, Panther Serve Day, I think it was five years ago now, where we were going to go out with the football team and work, just you know, paint, clean up, you know, do some work around town, just help some people. And my friend Eric Dickerson was given a Devo that day and I'll never forget it as long as I live. He, he was talking about basically being where your feet are and, and making the most of your time. He said he has two, I think it's two kids, and he bought two big glass jars, and he put 936 marbles in one of them. And every week, he would take one marble out and put it in the other jar. And he said these 936 marbles represented one marble per week and from the time his kid was born to the time his kid turned 18 and he was taking a marble out every week so that he could see what was actually happening like time moving yeah. I mean it's sand through the hourglass he was watching and he was talking about how we need to make the marble count and I've seen Lance Fetters posting pictures of his kids and videos and fun stuff that they're doing he's reading books to them and they're just having a, a good time and it, it really from then on to now and I'm, I'm glad these things tied together in the last day or so um, in my brain. But it really got me to thinking, like, what am I doing? When you see that marble move and you see, like, oh, that, that jar's getting more full and this one's going down. Like, my kids are growing up and my kids are never going to have this two-year-old and five, six-year-old time again. Your, your kids, your grandkids, your family is never going to have this time at home slowed down ever again. Right. Will you take this moment, will you take this opportunity to, to make the marble count, but to present yourself to God and say, all right, what do you need for me to change? What do we need to cut out as a family? What do we need to do differently when this comes back to quote unquote normal life? What, what do we need to do to present our bodies a living sacrifice? What do I need to do to be present? And what do I need to do to understand that I've been present? for this moment and for such a time as this. I, I think that Hedgeway's thinking forward. I hope you're thinking forward about ways that you can allow God to change uh, your perspective and get you, you know, and I'm doing this. I'm trying to deal with this myself as best I can because uh, every time I ever speak, it's usually about something that the Lord's dealing with me about. So, uh, like I said, it may be something for nobody else. I do believe that there are people who, who probably do need a bit of a paradigm shift in their minds and in their hearts, but... I hope you'll consider a way to give your life to Jesus. And it doesn't have to be, you know, one, two, three, A, B, C. We don't have to go through all the, the rigmarole. You can give your heart to Jesus right now, how, however you're feeling, whatever you're going through. Um, you just realize, I've, I've got a need for a Savior. I'm a sinner. We all are. We've all fallen short. And you just ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your heart. After this resurrection, what do we do now? Well, first off, we recognize that Jesus died for our sins. He raised again on the third day. He's the only person powerful enough to do that. And because of that, He's restored relationship with God for us. Even despite all the stuff we'd ever do wrong, He forgave it all on the cross. Past, present, future, it's all covered. It's all taken care of. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I really hope and pray and believe right now for people to send that word salvation because they've given their hearts to Jesus to that phone number that we mentioned earlier. And somebody's going to tag it in the comments right now. If you'll pray that prayer and send that word salvation to that phone number, I I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing from some of these people and, and walking through this time of our life with you guys. I know it's been a, a weird situation and we're ready for it to be over just as much as you are so we can get back to seeing you guys again. But I do hope that you'll make the most of these opportunities, that you'll try your absolute best to present your body to the Lord as a, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, something that will make a difference in your family for the rest of time, for this community. I, I wonder what a community full 
Uh, and I've seen some stuff in, in Russellville right now. One of the things that we're working on at work is a community project. And I'm seeing people come out of the woodwork to make a difference in their community. I wonder what a sold out hedgeway looks like for this community. We've done pretty awesome. I'll just give you guys a whole lot of credit. Y'all have done amazing stuff in this community. But what if everybody is sold out at the same time? What if everybody, what, what happens when the 120 get together in one place, in one accord, one heart, one mind? Power. I wonder what would happen in Johnson County if we could bind together and we could go the same direction, pull the same direction, do the same thing, believe the same thing. I'm believing that for Hedgeway. I'm believing that for your family. I want to pray for you, and then we're going to sing a little bit, and we'll see you out. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be together, however different it is from what we're used to. Whatever's going on in our lives, I pray you would help us to focus on presenting ourselves to you. I pray that you would help us to realize that not only should we present ourselves to you, but we should be present in our current situation. We should love on our kids because nobody else is going to do it for us. We should love on our wives and, and our husbands, and we should do our absolute best to lay our lives down for one another, to, to love each other like never before. Help us to get back to the basics of life. And finally, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be to understand that we are pre-sent for such a time as this. Just like with Esther, you were going to get your glory. You were going to win in the end. We have been sent to Hedgeway Church in Johnson County, Arkansas in 2020 for such a time as this, for this very moment. You knew what was going to happen. You didn't, aren't surprised by any of this. You weren't caught off guard. And I pray that you would help us to not only make the most of it, but to thrive in this time. I pray that you would help us to be evangelists for you, even if it's just clicking a button to share something. Thank you so much for all the good things that you've done in our lives and through us. And I pray a blessing upon each person watching this. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you more than anything that you got back up. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. See you move. You move the mountain, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move, yeah. You move the mountain. Great is your 
This would be the time I would say, uh, give Pastor Mark a hand clap and we would all stand up and cheer and tell him thank you for the word you brought this morning. Thank you uh, for what you mean to us and a uh, timely message that spoke into our lives. Um, so light up those comments right now. Encourage him. Thank him for the effort. That's not just something you just put together in a in a 30-minute span. That's that's effort. That's that's the Holy Spirit working through him. So thank you, Pastor Mark. Thank you to his family. If you're not familiar with the staff here, uh, I'm I'm Seth. I'm I'm on staff. I'm one of the pastors. This is my wife. I don't just randomly hold women's hands that I don't know. Um, this is my wife, Emily, and our family. We get to be here with you guys also. Man, thank you guys for doing the blessing this morning. I don't know if you enjoyed that song, but if I could get out from behind them drums, I would have been able to run a few laps in here this morning because it's, it's empty and I got some room to move. And uh, I tell you what I like the best about it. I like how it starts. I like the dynamics. I'm like Mark. I'm a music guy. I love uh, dynamics in songs. It's what makes a song, uh, you know, come to life. And I like how Pastor Jason started off. It's kind of mellow. It's kind of soft. But, man, when we get in that bridge and we get it cranking and it starts talking about how, how, how he is praying a blessing over our family, I like it because it ain't just a little sprinkle in me with a blessing. It's like the Holy Ghost done dumped a five-gallon bucket on my head. And it gets me excited because I don't know about you, I don't need a blessing that's just to let me bless you and let me be with you. I need somebody that's going to stand up and say, no, you're going to get a blessing. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be for you, not just you, but your children and your children and your children. Man, it is awesome. We hope you guys enjoyed this Sunday. I get the privilege and the honor to pray us out. So if you will, join me in prayer today. Lord, we thank you for today, God. We acknowledge you in this moment, Father. We pause and we assess the situation like Mark was encouraging us to do. And we, we look for your strength in the middle of all this. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are ever present. And that's what gives us the ability to be present. I love the thought that we are pre-sent, Lord. There's, there's a mission before each and every one of us that only we can feel. You're counting on us, Lord. You, you've gifted us. You've equipped us, God. You've, you've called us. Thank you for Mark. Thank you for the word today, Lord. I pray that you would bless those that come under the sound of my voice, Lord, that your blessing would be on them and it wouldn't just stop with them, but it would be on their family. God, it would be on everything they place their hand to do, Lord. It would be in every situation, God, Lord, because you're there with us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys. We'll be back next Sunday kicking off a new, a new series with Pastor. He's going to be up. You don't want to miss it. Like Mark said, share this video, man. Get it out there to people uh, because I'm telling you, if somebody needs to hear this word today, we love y'all. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.